Welcome to the Holy Yogi, where we help you find the guru inside of you. Hello, beautiful. Hello, handsome. How you doing? It's Ilan Bomani. And one of the key things that I want to say to you, first thing, if no one has told you today that they love you, let me be the first. I love you. And let's talk about this. Those of you who are trying to get your ex back. <laughs> I've seen the videos, I've seen the books, the tapes, the CDs, the DVDs that everybody's rushing to get. It's one of the most popular things that's online. Let's look at it from a spiritual perspective. One of the key things is if you're in that desperate, fearful place of getting your ex back, you're not falling in love. You've fallen in fear. I'm going to say that again. You haven't fallen in love. You're falling in fear. Most people are in fearful, obsession, or possession type of relationships. I'm nothing without you. Save me. I can't live without you. Honey child, if you can't live without another human being, it's a reflection of the fact that you can't live with the number one person that you should be loving, and that is you. That's what I want you to do. I want you to focus on, before you focus on getting your ex back, maybe that's why we lost our ex, is because we were coming from a place of fear and not love. And we've been coming from a place of constantly focusing on how to keep that person, how to not let that person go. You know, one minute, you know, we're in fear that we're not in a relationship. <laughs> we're in fear that when we're in a relationship, that the relationship's not going to work. And then when we're out of a relationship, that we'll never find that type of love again in our life. If you think about it, all those things, all those thoughts are negative. All those thoughts are fearful. All those thoughts are not in a place of love. And maybe is based upon what you're thinking, get it? Whatever the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve a self-fulfilled prophecy instead of focusing on the love in your life, focusing on giving, focusing on compassion, focusing on forgiveness, focusing on mercy. <laughs> a lot of us need a lot of mercy in a relationship. Focus on being graceful. And what I mean by that is, is that when you love yourself, you're more inclined to forgive yourself easily and effortlessly. There's nothing perfect, perfect about any of us. To err is to be human. We're all gonna make a mistake. And so shall your mate. They will make a mistake too. And that's where the compassion comes in at. That even though they're not responding the way that they should, even though they may have lied and they may have cheated, and the light. This is where we get into the place of compassion. We get in a place of understanding them for where they are at. Let's say, for example, if we had known that the reason why they may have been controlling in a relationship with you may be because of the mere fact that their father wasn't in their life or their mother wasn't in their life or they lost their father and mother at a very young age. We never know why people do the things that they do unless we start to communicate and open up and once again, come from a place of love. We immediately take it so personal and think it's a reflection upon us. People only hurt people when they are hurting themselves. So that's what I want you to focus on first and foremost. Don't focus on the other person. Focus on you and the feelings that you chose to feel based upon that relationship. Remember, no one can make you feel anything without your consent. If you got angry or mad based upon what they said or what they did, you got angry or mad or hurt or frustrated but that person did not make you angry or mad you made the decision to be angry or mad whatever uh, situation 
that you may have come upon or experienced with that individual. And that's why it's so important that right now, while you have this break, don't focus on getting your ex back. Focus on getting you back. That's right. It's all about you and everybody's just playing a role or a part in it. Focus on you and focus on loving you and identifying what true love is all about. Are you in relationships based on fear or are you in relationships based on love? Unconditional love. That's the only type of love that's out there. That's the only type of love that's real. All that stuff is, like they say, fake news is fake love. <laughs> So that's what I want you to do. I want you to get back into the business of loving you. That's what the universe is giving you an opportunity to do right now. That's why maybe it's a good thing that you're with you. Because once you develop a relationship with you, get you back. Develop a wonderful, loving relationship and seeing how it really should look. It should make you feel good inside. It should be a peace. It should be a joy. There should be no stress, no anger, no resentment, no fear involved. Once you get back to that place, then you'll be able to recognize and enjoy it. And once again, draw to you that same type of energy. You know, I remember when I was counseling a couple, and it was so ironic, but it was so real. I could remember that the the couple they were um in a nutshell they were the same type of personality i mean absolutely the same type of personality and unfortunately both of them had a very very low self-esteem and because of that low self-esteem and low opinion of themselves well what did they do they boomerang that low self-esteem and opinion on each other and put each other down and basically i'm going to say it about myself to you before you say it to me type of scenario you know we've all been there before at one time dealing with our insecurities and because of that they hurt each other immensely because both of them in a nutshell were not loving themselves as individuals so what did they do they drew other people to them that did not love themselves and you got two people that aren't loving themselves. And so what happens? They can't love each other. And that's why the relationship doesn't work. Oh, they try vehemently to do that, but until they learn to appreciate every aspect of themselves, how they looked, what foods they like to eat, what you know, hobbies they like to do, that they had lazy tendencies, that they like to watch soap operas, or whatever the case may be. Once they became at peace, with whom what they were, then they were able to become at peace with the little idiosyncrasies of their mate and who and what they were. That's what it's all about. That's why when people are so happy with themselves, they'll draw other people to themselves that are absolutely completely happy and joy. Not perfect, but on purpose. And with that in mind, they learn to appreciate the little imperfections with inside of themselves and not to live up to the Joneses or the expectations as far as society is concerned. Once you get to that place of complete unconditional love for yourself, you'll be able to be gracious and give it to other people. You know, I always say most people are adults, but they are not grown ups, meaning they haven't grown up. They're still very immature when it comes to emotions. Are you like that? I'll be the first to raise my hand. I was once like that too. Hey, think about it. We grew up in relationships with our family and our friends that truly were built on fear-based relationships and not loving relationships. So a lot of us really truly don't know what love is truly all about, what love's got to do with it <laughs> in a nutshell. But the only way we gotta learn is to basically sit down, meditate, pray, and focus on the way that God loves you. And if you can love other people the way that God loves you, oh my good, every relationship will be a special relationship and every relationship will be all good. So how does God love us? Well, come on, let's break it down. God is not envy. God is not jealous. God is not hate. God is not compete. God is not say vengeful, fearful, hateful words. 
God doesn't sin. And what I mean by that, you know, is this, that even when we do make mistakes, God is what? Forgiving, forever forgiving, forever compassionate. So immediately, you just stay, whenever someone so-called does you wrong, you immediately cancel universe and see them how they truly are as angels, as blessings, as gurus and yogis, just like you are. Once you realize that, you'll draw to you the wonderful angel in essence that you are. It takes a great deal of maturity to be gracious, compassionate, and forgiving individuals. You see, God provides for the birds, bees, flowers, and trees, no matter what they do. Fresh air, sunshine, food, clothing, shelter, everything that they need, they're being provided for, regardless if they're the murderer, the thief, or the drug dealer, or the rapist, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard for us to be that forgiving. But the reality of the situation is the same people that do the so-called heinous wrong things are experiencing the same love from God that the angels are experiencing. It takes a brave soul. It takes a mature soul. It takes an adult to be able to get to that place of true, unconditional and sometimes when a relationship that's been terminated by the universe, sometimes it's just for time, reason, and just a season. And that's where your spirit will guide you on which one it is for you. But for now, one of the key things is before you get your ex back, get you back and everything will be just fantastic. I love you, I adore you, and I care about every aspect of you. And those are the only type of energy, the only type of people that you want in your life. That those people are going to be there for you through the good times, the bad times, and all times. Peace, light, and love. Bye-bye for now. Like, comment subscribe. Talk to you soon.